viewers and welcome back to this educational series. Miss Pilgrim here again and today we are going to explore the English Anguish Arts paper for the SEA. But before we do, I want to remind you to visit the Ministry of Education School Learning Management System at learn.moe.gov.tt where you can find lessons and activities to help you prepare for the SEA. Let's get started on today's lesson. As I said before, today we're going to be exploring section one of the English Language Arts SCA exam. Just to remind you what this section looks like. You have three tasks. Task one has spelling, six items for 12 marks. One mark for identifying the error and one mark for actually writing the error. Task two is punctuation and capitalization. Here, you have to insert the correct answer, and that's six marks. And finally, task three, which is your grammar task, items 13 to 18 for 12 marks. Again, one mark for identifying the error and another mark for actually writing the correct answer. So we're going to get into task one, which is your spelling task. Before I do an exam, I always like to read my instructions. So let's read these instructions for task one of this section. There is one incorrectly spelt word in each line. There's only one, 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 just one, just one error. Even if you think there may be two or three, there's only one, so be careful with that. Number two, a line is not the same as a sentence. So there is one incorrectly spelt word in each line. Then you must draw a circle around the incorrectly spelt word. So the errors are coming within a six line passage and we have to draw a circle, circle the error. And that tells the examiner that you know what is incorrect. And finally, you need to write the correct form of the word in the box provided. Always pay attention to your instructions. So spelling detectives, I want you to get ready to do this passage, to read this passage, and to find all the spelling errors in this passage. Let's read this passage together. Physical activity is a very useful because it helps with the maintenance of healthy lifestyle. It is advisable to be physically engaged during our leisure time. Practice some form of exercise, dance, walk, or run. Movement actually improves concentration, which is essential to our survival. So this is our first task. Let's see if we can find the errors in this task. Let's examine spelling detectives. Let's examine number one. Number one is physical activity is very useful because it helps. Let's examine it very, very carefully. Look at each word and find the ones you know that are spelled correctly. Have you found them? Let's look at it again. These words are normal sight words, you know those. Let's look at the remaining words. Physical activity is very useful. Well, you know physical, physical, that looks correct. You know activity, activity, that looks correct. Hmm, useful. Hmm, is that right? What's the rule that governs the spelling of this word? Mm-hmm, I think that this is the incorrect word. So. Physical activity is very useful because it helps. It is important to know not just what the error is, but why it's incorrect. And you must know the rule that governs the spelling of this word. Let's look at the rule. Five seconds. So the rule is when the suffix full is added to the end of a base word, drop one L in the full. So the word is use, we want to add the suffix full. 
So we need to drop one of the L's. And so the word is useful. Very good. We've done our first one. Excellent. We've identified it and we've written it. So we've gotten our two marks. Let's find the errors in the other lines now. Line two, with the maintenance of a healthy lifestyle. It is, so we're going to look at that entire line and see what the error is. Let's look at the line carefully. With the maintenance of a healthy lifestyle, it is. What word is spelt incorrectly in this line? You're right, maintenance. But spelling detectives, what's the rule that governs the spelling of this word? Think about it. I'm giving you five seconds if you can figure out the rule. Think very carefully. Time's up. What do you think is the rule that governs the spelling of this word? Actually, there's no rule because it's a frequently misspelled word. You just have to learn how to spell the word. What I like to do is find ways to help me remember words like this. So if you look at the word maintenance, we know that that A-I-N is not supposed to be there. We know that the E-N goes there. So what I like to do when I want to spell that word and I'm not sure how to spell it, I tell myself there is a 10 in maintenance. That helps me to remember the word. So maybe that trick will help you. So let's get on to the next word. Advisable to be physically engaged during our. So let's look at number three. Advisable to be physically engaged during our. What word, which word is spelled incorrectly in this line? Advisable, physically, engaged, hmm. The word is advisable. But spelling detectives, what is the rule? Five seconds. Time's up. What is the rule? You drop the E at the end of words when adding an ending that begins with a vowel suffix. That sounds very fancy. But look at this word. The word advice has a silent E at the end. If you want to add a suffix, in this case, able, able begins with a vowel. We need to remove that E. And so the word is advisable. So you've gotten your mark. Excellent. Moving on to number three in this spelling task. How are you doing? I think you're doing very well. Leisure time, practice some form of exercise. Let's examine it very closely. Number four, leisure time, practice some form of exercise. Hmm, what is the error? Some of you might say practice, but practice is a verb, and we use the S when we're talking about verbs for practice. All right, so let's see. Which word is spelled incorrectly? The word is leisure. But what is the rule? I think you know it, but I'm giving you five seconds to get your thoughts together. Time's up. The rule is, and you know this, I before E except after C. But you know, there's a little bit more to this rule. Also except when your foreign neighbor Lay takes a leisurely ride on her beige sleigh. That always cracks me up. But let's get into this rule very seriously here. The rule is I before E. So when that IE combination occurs in words, it's very natural to spell IE because it's most common. Achieve, believe, niece, and peace. All of those words with that IE con combination, I before E, most commonly used. However, when there is a C, oftentimes you need to change that IE to EI. Words like conceive, words like perceive, words like receive, and of course, receipt. 
So generally, the rule is that that EI combination generally follows a C when the sound of the EI sounds like E. So when you have a C in the word and it sounds like E, then you're going to use EI. Conceive, perceive, receive, and receipt. When that long EI, when that long E sound is made, then we know we want to use EI. However, the EI combination can follow other consonants. So beige, foreign, neighbor, and leisure. All of those words have EI in it, but remember, they don't sound like E. And therefore, we're going to use that EI combination. So these words have other consonants that have that EI combination. It's important that you learn these over time. So we use the EI words when the vowel sound of the EI is not the long E sound. The rule is therefore I before E, except after C, when the sound of the word is E. So know your EI words. In this case, the word is leisure. It doesn't sound like E. It doesn't sound like E. The consonant is there, so we must have leisure and not IE there. We're doing very well so far. We're almost at the end of task one. Let's look at number five. Dance, walk, or run. Movement actually improves. Let's look at it carefully. Dance, walk, or run. Movement actually improves. Now sometimes our mind plays tricks on us and we think the biggest word might be the word that's spelt incorrectly. But be careful because that may not be the case here. Look at it carefully. What word is spelt incorrectly in this line? The word is actually. Spelling detective. What's the rule that governs the spelling of the word actually? Five seconds. Time's up. You add L-Y to words that end in a consonant. So the word is actual. It ends with the consonant L. And therefore, if you want to add L-Y, we're not removing the L. We have to add the L-Y. And so the two L's will, will occur there, actual and then Lee. So that's the word. Doing very well. We're getting our marks. We're accumulating our marks here. We're going to do very well in SEA here. And we're down to our final number in this task. Number six, concentration, which is essential to our survival. Let's look at it very carefully. Concentration, which is essential to our survival. What's the error in this sentence? Hmm. You're right if you said concentration. But what's the rule, spelling detectives? Let's check it out. You have five seconds. Time's up. The general rule is that when C meets A, O, or U, we get a hard sound, K. So words like cat and cut and cup. If you see these words, you won't say sat and sat and sup, right? Because of the vowels that are there. And the rule is, when C meets E, I, or Y, it's a soft sound, S, like scent and cinder and cycle. So when you see those vowels, you know that the sound is soft. So in concentration, in the word concentration, because we have that vowel E, we have a soft C sound. And so we spell it with the C. And there you have it. We've completed the spelling task, all six items. And if you do it just like this, you will get your 12 marks. Be careful that you circle your error and write the correct thing in the box provided, and you will get your marks. Before we go on, I want to have a little spelling bee. Get a pencil and paper. I will call out the word. And you will write the word, and let's see if you can also remember the rule. So spell detectives, spell useful. That's number one. Spell useful. 
Number two, spell maintenance. Spell maintenance. Number three, spell advisable. Spell advisable. Number four, spell leisure. Leisure. Number five, actually. Actually. And to number six, spell concentration. Spell concentration. Check over your words and let's see if you also remember the rules. I think you're going to do very well. I have great hope in you. You're very bright students. Let's get to it. First word is useful. And the rule is when the suffix full is added to the end of a base word, drop one L. Number two, maintenance. There's no real word rule that governs this word, the spelling of this word, but try to help you to remember by telling yourself, hmm, there's a 10 in maintenance. That helps me to remember to spell that word. Advisable, that was number three. Drop the E at the end of words when adding an ending that begins with the vowel suffix. Number four, leisure. And of course, you went through the I before E, except after C, but there are exceptions. Number five, add L-Y for actually, add L-Y to words ending in a consonant. And finally, concentration. And the rule is, when C meets E, I or Y, we have a soft sound. You did very well, students. Congratulations. You've earned 12 marks in task one. Stay tuned for task two, and we're going to tackle punctuation and capitalization. We'll be right back. students and we are here working on task two for the SEA English language arts paper this task deals with punctuation and capitalization I want to remind you that these are the marks that are tested for SEA first we have our full stop exclamation mark and question mark those are our end marks then we have our pause marks the comma and the colon those are the only two that are tested for SEA and finally, some other marks that are tested for the SEA are the apostrophe for the apostrophe S and your quotation marks. Those are all of the marks and just those marks that are going to be used, that are going to be assessed in SEA. So if you get a punctuation and capitalization task, don't put any other punctuation mark because that's not what's going to be tested. And just a reminder about the instructions. There is one punctuation and capitalization error in every line. Insert the missing punctuation or capital letter within the passage. So there's only one error, as I said. Two, a line is not the same as a sentence. So be careful with that. And three, the errors will occur within a six-line passage. It always will. Four. Whereas in task one, you wrote the word at the end and in the box provided the side of the task, within this task, you are actually inserting the correct mark within the passage itself. So here are some help helpful tips for this section. Read the passage twice, and then get a general idea of the punctuation in that passage. Although there's only one error per line, you still need to read the sentence to get a sense of how the punctuation will flow. And you may find it helpful to also read the sentence before or after the line that you are examining. Are you ready for the task? I am. Let's get to it. So PC detective, punctuation and capitalization detective. Let's read this passage. I really love to watch movies, action, comedy, and adventure. 
Kyle, my best friend, went with me to view Avengers Infinity War. We ate popcorn, nachos, candy, and drank juice throughout the movie. The only problem I had was hearing some women's conversation while the movie was going on. Have you ever had that problem? So this is our task. Let's see if we can work out the punctuation and capitalization in this passage. So PC detectives, we're going to examine number seven. Number seven is, I really love to watch movies, action, comedy, and I'm going to read that again. I really love to watch movies, action, comedy, and what punctuation marks do you think we will need for this line? We'll read it again. I really love to watch movies, action, comedy, and adventure. Something is missing there. Notice I've paused there. That's because we need a punctuation mark there. What punctuation mark do you think is needed in this section? Is it a full stop? Is it an exclamation mark? Is it a comma? Or is it a colon? You have five seconds to figure out which one it is. Time's up. If you said D, colon, then you are absolutely correct. Congratulations. A colon is needed in this sentence. So let's get to a brief reminder about colons and why and how these punctuation marks are used. A colon is a mark. Remember I've said a colon is a pause mark. It's a special pause mark. And it's used at the end of an independent clause. Remember in a previous lesson, I said that an independent clause is a clause that can stand on its own. Another type Another word or another phrase for independent clause is a simple sentence. So colons can come after an independent clause. Colons silently replace expressions like that is, which is, which are, and the following. So when you use a colon, you are silently saying that is, which is, or are, or the following. And finally, colons give you a signal to pay attention to what will follow it. So a colon actually is saying, ta-da, I'm going to tell you something important. So that's important for you to remember about the use of a colon in a sentence. So let's look at the sentence, the lines. Now let's, let's look at the sentence here. Let's look at the sentence here. I really love to watch movies, action, comedy, and adventure. So this section of this line, the sentence, is an independent clause. I really love to watch movies. That can actually stand on its own as a sentence. It's an independent clause. And the person is saying, I really love to watch movies. And the person is, giving, is going to now give examples of the type of movies that he or she enjoys watching. And so the colon is going to indicate they silently indicate that is. So I really love to watch movies that is action, comedy, and adventure. And that's a little trick that you can use when you're not sure about the colon. If you can replace the colon with that is, or for example, or the following, that kind of thing, then most likely you can use the colon there. So I really love to watch movies, action, comedy and adventure. Here's a spoiler alert about the use of the colon. Do not use a colon immediately after phrases like that is, such as, and including. That would be redundant. For example, my bag is full of stationery, including pens, pencils, and notepads. That's incorrect, because that colon there is the same as saying including, including. So it might read, my bag is full of stationery, including, including pens, pencils, and notepads. So we don't want an extra, we don't want a colon that's adding extra and extra including. So the correct thing is, my bag is full of stationery, 
colon, pens, pencils and notepads, that colon there replaces the word including. And that's correct. So let's practice. We have a few sentences. Let's see where we're going to put this colon. I have one main goal in life, to always do my best. Where do you think a colon should go here? I have one main goal in life, to always do my best. If you said it goes after life, then you're absolutely correct. Congratulations. I have one main goal in life. That is to always do my best. Let's look at number two. This house has everything I need. Two bedrooms, a backyard, and a spacious kitchen. Where should a colon go here? This house has everything I need. Two bedrooms, a backyard, and a spacious kitchen. Where should the colon go? If you said after need, then you are absolutely correct. This house has everything I need. That is, two bedrooms, a backyard, and a kitchen. Very good. This one might be a bit tricky. We may have to take out something. We may need to cross out something. Let's see if we can work it out. I bought several types of meat at the grocery, such as beef, chicken, and turkey. If we were to place a colon in the sentence, what, how might we have to adjust the sentence? I bought several types of meat at the grocery, such as beef, chicken, and turkey. Where should the colon go and what can we take out? What can we omit from the sentence? Look at it carefully. If we remove such as, then the sentence would be, I bought several types of meat at the grocery, colon, beef, chicken, and turkey. The phrase such as is implied by the colon. So we have to remove the such as and replace it with the colon. I bought several types of meat at the grocery, such as, that is, beef, chicken, and turkey. You're doing so well, students. We're going to get into number eight of this task. I really love to watch movies was the first one, number seven, and we're going into, I really love to watch movies, action, comedy, and adventure. Kyle, my best friend, went with me to view. Hmm. Kyle, my best friend, went with me to view. The missing mark is right there. What mark replaces, what mark should go in that space? Is it a full stop? Is it an exclamation mark? Is it a comma? Or is it a colon? You have five seconds to work it out. What is the missing mark? What is the missing mark? If you said C, then you are brilliant. Definitely, it is the comma. Congratulations, you're a star student. So what's the reason? Let's examine it carefully. Kyle, my best friend, went with me to view. My best friend is what is called an appositive. And therefore, when we use an appositive, we need to frame our positives with commas. Kyle, my best friend, went with me to view. Now, some of you might be asking, appositives? Hmm? What? What's an appositive? And a positive is really a word or word group that gives bonus information about the noun or phrase preceding it. Use a comma to separate your positives. So Shaquille, my best friend, is an excellent musician. So don't forget to use your commas with your positives. We're moving on to number nine. We're doing very well, students. Keep up the pace with me. We can get this done. So we're moving on to number nine. Let's examine it. Avengers Infinity War. Avengers Infinity War. We ate, we ate popcorn, nachos, candy. Hmm. Something is wrong here with this Avengers Infinity War. We need to insert the capital I there because the entire movie 
is Avengers Infinity War. So the whole movie, you need to have the capital letter there for the entire movie. So that's very good if you got it correct. If you have eagle eyes and you got it correct, congratulations. We're moving on to number 10. We add popcorn, nachos, and candy, and drank juice throughout the movie. The only problem, we, drank, we ate popcorn, nachos, candy. I'm reading the sentence, the line before, so we can get a sense of how, the, how, the, how, the, how it flows. We ate popcorn, nachos, candy, and drank juice throughout the movie. The only problem, hmm, let's examine it carefully. This section is from the line before. There's a missing mark after movie, isn't there? What's the mark? This is an easy one. What do you think is the mark that's missing? If you said full stop, you are correct. Excellent work. We're almost done. Two more to do. We are number 11 in this task. Let's get to it. The only problem I had was hearing some women's conversation while the. Let's examine it carefully. I had was hearing some women's conversation. Hmm. You have a missing mark there. And I think you know. This is so easy for you. I think you know that an apostrophe is missing there. I won't even give you the multiple choice because this is so very easy. Excellent work, students. And we're on to number 12. We're almost done with this task. You're almost ready to get your six out of six marks in this task. Last line. Movie was going on. Have you ever had that problem? OK, this is too easy. This is too, too, too easy. I don't even need to give you any extra help with this. Have you ever had that problem? This is a? question and therefore we need to have our question mark fabulous and so we have our entire passage i really love to watch movies action comedy and adventure kyle my best friend went with me to view avengers infinity war we ate popcorn nachos candy and drank juice throughout the movie the only problem i had was hearing some women's conversation while the movie was going on have you ever had that problem? Congratulations, students. You have completed task two in the SEA ELA exam. We're doing very well. Congratulations, students. You have successfully completed task two. But remember, these are the pause marks that are examined for SEA. Only these marks. These end marks, full stop, exclamation mark, question mark, the pause marks, the comma and the colon, the apostrophe, and the quotation marks. So master your use of them. Stay tuned. Task 3 is coming up. Welcome back, students. We are here working on task three in the SEA ELA exam. We're tackling grammar now. And again, we're going through the task, going through the instructions, always go through your instructions. There is only one error per line. A line is not the same as a sentence. The errors will occur within a six line passage and circle the error. and write the correct form of the word in the box provided. Some helpful tips to remember, read the entire passage twice and check for the overall verb tense. That gives you a sen sense of what verbs you should use for this passage. Although there's one error per line, you may need to read the entire sentence to give you a sense of what grammar rule has to be applied. And of course, you may find it helpful to also read the sentence before the line and after the line. So grammar detectives, let's get ready to read the passage. Twilight approached more peaceful than I could have imagined. 
As I lied on my back, looking at the night sky, I saw fluffy white clouds. It drifted slowly and sluggishly by the sky. Dancing playfully in my mind were images whom I had created. When my mother's voice interrupted the silence, I rose reluctantly. So this passage has a lot of errors because I even had difficulty in reading it. So we have a lot of things to fix with this passage. Let's find the verbs in this passage. Remember I said a, a helpful hint when you're doing the grammar section is read the passage and get a general sense of the verbs that are used, the tense that's used in this passage. So let's find the finite verbs in this passage. Remember, finite verb has a subject. It has a tense, it has a subject. So let's look for this, let's look for all the finite verbs. I'm giving you 10 seconds to examine the passage and find the finite verbs in this passage. Time's up. So what are the finite verbs in this passage? Let's look at it carefully. Approached, could have, imagined, lied, saw, drifted, were, had created, interrupt, rose. Note that dancing is not a finite verb because it has no subject, right? So this passage mostly uses the past tense. We will need this information later when we're working out the answers to, the, to this passage. Let's examine it carefully. Let's look at number 13. Twilight approached more peaceful than I could have. Twilight approached more peaceful than I could have. Hmm. The verb is approached. Hmm. How did twilight approach? Peaceful. Peaceful looks like an adjective. Hmm. I need an adverb to modify this verb. If we have the verb approached, then we need an adverb to modify, modify it. We need to know how twilight approach. Most adverbs, not all of them, but most of them end in ly, and therefore, we have to change it to peacefully. So that's the first error. Twilight approach more peacefully than I could have. Let's get to number 14. Imagined as I lie on my back looking at the night sky. All right. What's the finite verb? Lied. I lied on my back looking at the night. Is that the correct verb though? Lied means did not tell the truth. But lay means was in a horizontal position. And so the answer is lay. So let's get to the next task, number 16. I saw fluffy white clouds. It drifted slowly and I saw fluffy white clouds. It drifted slowly and to what does it refer? It refers to the fluffy white clouds. So my nouns and my pronouns must agree. So we need a plural noun there. I saw fluffy white clouds. They drifted slowly. So the answer there is the. So we're moving on. To number 16, the clouds drifted slowly and sluggishly by the sky. The clouds drifted slowly and sluggishly by the sky. The previous line is there. They, the clouds, drifted slowly and sluggishly by the sky. But do clouds drift by the sky? They don't drift by the sky, they drift across the sky. And so the answer is by. By is incorrect, so we have to choose our prepositions wisely. 
So we're moving on to number 16. Dancing playfully in my mind were images whom I had created. Dancing playfully in my mind were images whom I had created. So that's from the previous line. Images whom I had created. Whom is the error there? Because images refers to things. And whom refers to people. So we don't want a pronoun there that refers to things. Remember, who is used for people, and that and which are used for animals and things. So we want that or which there. Dancing playfully in my mind were images that I had created or which I had created. So we're getting closer to the end of task three. Our final line, line 18. But before we do, let's get a flashback to all the finite verbs that are there, because that's going to help you understand the error in the last line. Look at all the finite verbs, mostly uses the past tense. So if we look at this, the error at the bottom there in the final line is interrupted. When my mother's voice interrupted the silence. Not my mother's voice interrupt the silence because the entire passage is written in the past tense. So that verb there has to be past tense as well. And here we have all of the items. Did you get all of them correct? I think you did. You have done extremely well, students. Congratulations. You have actually completed section one of the exam. And if you've gone through all these tips, you would have gotten all your marks. You are doing very well in this section one. See, if you want to get more activities like this, don't forget to visit the school learning management system at learn.moe.gov.tt. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and stay tuned for another one at another time right back here on TTT. Take care.